This is Nick with Temple of Geek, and I'm here with the absolute legend, Ahmed Best. Oh. <laughs> nice meeting you. And first off, 25 years mm. of the Phantom Menace. How has it been for you in the fandom these days? It's been fantastic. All of the young people that grew up watching The Phantom Menace, it was either their first movie or their first entry into Star Wars, have, have really been having their moment, because they're, now they're all adults, and they have children, and they're introducing their children to Star Wars through The Phantom Menace, so it's been really wonderful to have all of these multi-generational, you know, Star Wars enthusiasts um, appreciating the movie. And you've been doing Jar Jar throughout the years. The Clone Wars story arc that surprised me the most was you and Mace Windu. Yeah. yeah. That just that just worked. It was just an amazing storyline, and it worked. I don't know what. <laughs> yeah, it was like a buddy cop movie. Yeah. You know, me and Mace Windu. That was a lot of fun. And Jar Jar had game like that. Yeah, I even had like a girlfriend in one of the episodes. It was pretty great. It's like the wonderful evolution of Jar Jar and his maturity. And of course, Jar Jar continues, and we've got Building the Galaxy yes. coming up with with. Darth, Darth Jar Jar. What is your favorite aspect of, of bringing that into? I love the fact that I get the Dark Falcon um, because as a kid who wanted to be Han Solo growing up, I always wanted to have a Millennium Falcon and now I have one. So it's going to be really fun. Um, it's really funny. Uh, I think all ages will enjoy it and it's another, you know, another way to tell some really cool Star Wars stories. So I saw Keller and Beck with the Jedi Te Temple Challenges, and I was like, that is, that's amazing. Such a wonderful show. But then in The Mandalorian, when those doors opened, and it was Keller and Beck, I mean, I, myself and the fandom just, just lost our minds with that. Uh, what was it like for you to bring a character that you created uh, into Star Wars like that? Um, it was an honor. Star Wars has always been something that I've dreamt about, you know, ever since I was a little, little one. Even like being a writer on it, being a director on it, being an actor on it, you know, the actor part in Phantom Menace, that came true and I, I wasn't looking for it, you know, it just kind of happened. But with Kellerin, I had much more control over the narrative and there was so much that I wanted to do with that character and I wanted to see it evolve over Jedi Temple Challenge over the game and when the game ended, I was, I, was, I didn't want to let him go. So I was really, um, I was just over the moon that they decided to bring him into the Mandalorian, you know. And even though I've only done like one tenth of one percent of what I can do as Keller and Beck, uh, it was just really exciting to be able to see the other side, right? See the Jedi side. On on Temple Challenge, it was like the teacher side, you know. Uh, so I, I just loved it. I thought it was fantastic, and I couldn't be more grateful to Dave and John and, and Rick Fuwa and everybody at Mandalorian. And you've got a rich martial arts background, and you brought that into Keller and Beck. But I believe Keller has a nickname, right? Yeah. And there's a meaning behind that. Yeah, Keller nickname is the Sabered Hand. And I came up with that in Jedi Temple Challenge, but the Sabered Hand has a lot of different meanings. Um, the, the most important one being to me is like, you know, so I'm a big Bruce Lee fan. I studied Bruce Lee's martial art, Jeet Kune Do, and I also studied G Bruce Lee's original martial art, Wing Chun Gong Fu. And um, a lot of Wing Chun is about being formless, being like water, you know, whatever happens, you can adapt to it. Um, but the, the sabered hand was really influenced by this idea that, you know, a punch is a punch and a kick is a kick. After a while, you've done a thousand punches, you've done a thousand kicks, you've done a thousand styles. But it really is about the simplicity of the hand that wields the weapon. And it's about being economic and, and efficient when you are playing or, or fighting, right? It really isn't about being flashy like or, or being extravagant. Although I can do flashy and extravagant moves, the one move is the one move that's the best move is the move that works. And so the sabered hand is really about that. It's really about him using the simplicity of the hand to wield the lightsaber. So you know a lot of people are like, oh you have a green lightsaber, a blue lightsaber, a red lightsaber. 
for Keller and Beck, the color of the lightsaber isn't the issue. It really is the hand that wields it. Very true. And I've heard rumors that it might not be the end of Keller and Beck. We might, whispers of, yeah, you never know. I mean, I hope not. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, there's just, there's just so much that I want to do and so much that I want to show. I really want, I really want everyone to see a Jedi who really is excited about being a teacher. And not only teaching a Padawan, but just spreading knowledge and being able to turn these young Jedis into the best Jedis that they can be, you know. One of my Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu teacher, John Machado, would always say, I'm not trying to make you like me, I'm trying to make you like you. And I want Keller and Beck to be able to show these Jedi's coming up that you can be you as a Jedi. You don't have to be me. You don't have to be Obi-Wan Kenobi. You don't have to be Qui-Gon Jinn. You can be you, and that's special. Yeah. And uh, you've had George Lucas as a mentor for, for a lot of years, not only just filmmaking, but also Star Wars and the Force. And I've heard you talk about the balance of the Force, but what is the best lesson that you've learned with George when it comes to Star Wars? Yeah, I mean, the best lesson for me as, as, a, as a filmmaker that I learned from him was let everybody make you look great. You know, George never got in the way of the artistry, the creativity, and the performance. Like, if he saw something good, he stepped away and let it happen, you know? He let everybody be who they are, and, you know, at the end of the day, his name goes on the line as director, so, you know, he looks like a genius. Um, a lot of his ideas are very genius ideas, but some of the most genius things that he's ever done, especially with us, was just to let us cook and let us create and step away. I mean. You, I think the mark of a good director is knowing when not to talk, and that's the, that's the biggest lesson that I learned from him. That's amazing. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking your time here, and thank you for you know enriching all of our lives for all these years. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.